Hey everyone, how's it going? Today I want to talk about a fighter aircraft that needs some more attention and love, and that's the de Havilland Mosquito. Now I'm being a little bit sarcastic, as the Mosquito already gets a ton of attention and praise, but let's give it a little more, as it really was a fantastic plane, being quite easy to produce, incredibly versatile, agile, especially for a twin-engine plane, and one of the fastest planes in the world for a time. Its fantastic performance, for what was basically a bunch of wood clamped together, has led to it being one of the standard bearers for twin-engine fighters of its era, to be compared against and sometimes copied, like in the case of the Focke Wolf TA-154 that also bore the name Mosquito. This then leads to our subject for today another British design that was known by some as the Tin Mosquito, due to similarities in its design and role. But I personally prefer to call it the Metal Mosquito, because that's just more metal. This is Vickers Armstrong's Metal Mosquito. This is the Vickers Type 432. Its story starts back in March or April 1939, before the start of World War II, with the British military looking to add a new, high-speed, powerful, heavy fighter to its arsenal. And do keep in mind that early on, the Mosquito was intended to be a bomber, and so Britain didn't have a modern heavy fighter in the works or in their arsenal yet. To this need, they issued specification F639, which called for a two-seat fighter with a top speed above 400 miles an hour, with a devastating armament of at least 420 mil cannons, and possibly two or more 40 mil cannons. Britain basically wanted a flying tank on steroids, and to this request, several companies would submit designs, and one of those companies was Vickers. Independently of this design request, Vickers had been working on a heavy fighter design called the Type 414, based around the Rolls-Royce Griffin engine and a movable 40 mil cannon in the nose that could move around 55 degrees vertically and 30 degrees horizontally. While this wasn't exactly what the British Air Ministry had in mind, they were nonetheless interested in it and released specification F-2239 for the movable 40 mil nose cannon design. The Air Ministry still wanted their heavy fighter with multiple 20 mil cannons, though, and so they struck a deal with Vickers for two prototypes, one of the Type 414 and one that would fit the original F-639 specs, and that contract would be signed on August 30th, 1939, just two days before World War II began. So, as the war started just two days later, and Britain was now directly involved, although it would be a little while before they saw any substantial combat, their direct involvement meant that Vickers' work on the Type 414 was pretty slow. By October 1940, Vickers tested the 40 mil nose cannon on the frame of a Vickers Wellington bomber, and by November, they started engaging in target practice. In that target practice, they didn't actually manage to hit the target, but they did estimate that about half of the shots were within four feet of the target. So, all in all, not actually a bad start. But well before this cannon testing had taken place, in February 1940, during a conference with the Air Ministry, some questions and comments were raised about the Vickers project, with some participants seemingly more interested in the more conventional other model that would be outfit with the 20 mil cannons. In response to this inquiry, two months later, Vickers produced an alternate to the Type 414 that removed the movable 40 mil cannon and instead installed either eight 20 mil cannons or two 40 mil cannons. This version would be officially proposed two months later in June, and the Air Ministry's response was very positive. 
quickly issuing specification F1640 for Vickers' now named Type 420 design, and the 420 was given much higher priority over the Type 414. But for whatever reason, even though the Type 420 had greater priority, it doesn't appear as though any substantial progress was ever actually made on it, other than internal design studies and the like. By the time 1941 hit, neither the 414 or 420 appeared to be even close to a functional prototype. But still, by mid-January 1941, Vickers would produce another variant of the 414-420 line of designs that reduced the armament to 420mm cannons and swapped out the Rolls-Royce Griffin engines with lower horsepower Rolls-Royce Merlin engines. This design, too, received interest from the British Air Ministry, and it would temporarily receive a designation as the Type 420 Design B alternate. With now three Vickers designs on the table, the Air Ministry began to gravitate towards just two of them, in the Type 420A and 420B. Keep in mind that the Battle of Britain had ended just a few months prior, and the ever-present threat of German bombers over Britain was very much in the minds of the Air Ministry and so what would likely end up being a more ground-attack-oriented plane in the Type 414 was gradually left by the wayside, before work on it officially ended sometime in March 1941, and so thus ended the original purpose of the Vickers design. Now back down to two designs, the focus had officially shifted from General Heavy Fighter over to High Altitude Fighter to take out enemy bombers, and in September 1941, the Air Ministry issued specification F741. That followed along from the previous specs and added in a pressurized cockpit that was manned by a single crew member and revised the armament to 620mm cannons. To these revised specs, finally came Vickers' Type 432 design, and with this new design on the table, the original contract for two Type 414s or 420s was officially cancelled, and a new contract was signed in its place for two Type 432s. Measuring in at 11.96 meters long, 17.34 meters wide, and 4.19 meters tall, the Type 432 was overall smaller than the de Havilland Mosquito, but with a gross weight of 20,168 pounds, it was heavier than the Mosquito by about 2,000 pounds. This was because the Type 432 was an all-metal construction, rather than a wooden one, and the six total 20 mil cannons would probably be heavier than the 420 mil and four 7.7 mil guns on the Mosquito. While the Mosquito was well known for its simplistic construction method, being made in two separate halves and then squished together, the Type 432 largely followed a more conventional method, except for its wings. In an effort to reduce weight and increase fuel capacity, the wings were constructed with an odd and unique so-called lobster claw structure where the bulk of the wing's internal supports were concentrated just under the surface. This left the center of the wings hollow, which gave them extra room for extra fuel tanks if so desired. This potential extra fuel capacity gave the Type 432 increased range over the Mosquito, 1,500 miles compared to 1,300 miles. Powered by two Merlin engines with around 1,500 horsepower apiece, Vickers estimated that the top speed would be upwards of 435 miles an hour, and in some studies by the Royal Aircraft Establishment, they believe that speeds upwards of 550 in a dive were possible. By early 1942, the construction of the first Type 432 prototype would begin and by the end of that same year, around late October, early November, 
the first prototype was ready for testing. Not flight testing yet, though, as initial taxiing tests already revealed some directional instability, and on the ground, the Type 432 didn't want to drive in a straight line. After an alteration to the landing gear, on December 24, 1942, the Type 432 finally took to the air, and apparently things didn't go all that well. While I'm not exactly sure what happened, just five days later, it was advised that the Type 432 project would stop at just one prototype, and the second prototype was officially cancelled. So, while it appears as though the Type 432 was already dead just after taking its first steps, it would still be trotted out for 28 more flights between that first day and November 1944. And as more data on the design rolled in, that quick cancellation started to make a bit more sense. To put it simply, the Type 432 was unstable and difficult and demanding to fly. Try as they might to remedy these issues by reworking the tail surface, slightly altering the wing shape, altering the control surfaces, only some of these issues could be somewhat mitigated, and they would never end up being fully solved. If that wasn't bad enough, the Type 432 was supposed to be a high-altitude fighter, and yet the Merlin 61 engines it had installed struggled to perform at high altitudes, at least in part because of cooling issues. While its projected top speed was 435 miles an hour, the actual top speed was over 50 miles an hour lower, at 380. This top speed was achieved without the planned pressurized cockpit and without the 620mm cannons. So, unless they had added some ballast to simulate the weight, it is entirely possible that the top speed would have been even lower. Past November 1944, the lone Type 432 likely either sat in storage for a little while, or was just scrapped shortly after its final flight. Vickers would receive the order to scrap it in late 1945, so at the very least, by late 1945, the metal Mosquito was no more. Honestly, even though the initial flight testing of it wasn't great, it never really got a fair shake. It's not as if the Mosquito came right out of the gate as a great plane. There were problems in that design too that needed to be worked out. But for whatever reason, even though they went through 19 different iterations of the plane to finally arrive at the Type 432, the British military just kind of decided that they weren't interested in it anymore. I guess maybe the British just hate metal. They're way more into classical, those guys. Alright, and with that, we're going to go ahead and end for today. So, thank you all for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Using my imagination a little bit, I feel like the Metal Mosquito should be a superhero or supervillain of some kind. Probably a supervillain that's also a vampire, and I, I don't know, I guess gives people malaria. Certainly wouldn't be the weirdest character out there, not by a long shot. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. So, see ya!